you are into movie movie related discussions, you've come to the right place. Who am I, you ask? I am the Wiz, and I'm here today with Zero. Zero. How you doing today? A bit melted from the heat. Oh, it's God. supposed to reach 108 um, out where I'm at. <laughs> oh, that's fucking awful. Why don't we get through this quickly so you don't melt in the middle of our podcast? We are here to discuss the film that came out this past year. It is right now the most money making film of the year that might get overtaken pretty soon but we'll see and we're talking about the super mario brothers movie directed by and this is a lot of people aaron horvath michael jelinek and pierre leduc uh, this is from illumination studios it's about time we've watched a movie based on a video game property i, I think we should start with this review right now is what is our familiarity with the mario franchise tell me about yours play the original super mario brothers on the original nes mm -hmm. um and pretty much it played almost every mainline game for every nintendo console there is um including new super mario brothers and then of course um super mario odyssey that came out on switch yeah. so pretty much caught up definitely gonna have to pick up super mario wonder because that just looks like an acid trip. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I am with you. I've pretty much played every mainline Mario. I've played most of the uh, Mario Karts. I stopped playing the Mario Party games after the N64. I think they're just not fun, <laughs> to be completely honest. Yeah, New Super Mario Brothers I've played a lot of. Uh, yeah, I'm very familiar with Mario. Like I, I think the Mario games are some of the best games ever made. Uh, we can go for the original Super Mario Brothers. All right, well, let me ask you a question then. Name your three favorite Mario games. Honestly, it's easily up there just because it's just a complete blast. Second to that, probably Super Mario World, mostly because of just all the neat mechanics and everything yeah. that they introduced. And then in third place would probably be Super Mario Brothers 3, mostly because just that one was one hell of a game to close out the NES development cycle oh. um, because just all the stuff it did just it really pushed the limits of what the NES could do yeah oh I, I think mine is a little bit similar I, I really liked Odyssey but number three for me is Super Mario 64 I've always had an affinity to that and a, an attachment to it I really love uh, Mario 64 I, I think if I was going to do a fourth and a fifth it would probably be Super Mario Galaxy 2 and then Odyssey 2 is going to probably be Mario 3 and then one is going to be Super Mario World I, I'm not going to discount your like selections because honestly they're all great well Except for Sunshine. Sunshine's crap. But the the rest of them are fantastic. Except for the first Super Mario Land. But they're all great. Uh, but except for, like, New Super Mario Bros. 2. That was pretty bad. Yeah, there have been some bad ones. But anyway. No, but, like, these are all fantastic games. We're both, I think, really familiar with the property. I guess the question that I would have had going into it, and maybe I think you had the same too, was how exactly are going to make this into a movie? Because if there's one thing that the Mario games are not known for, it's story. Yeah, I mean, the story is as basic as it can get in the games and everything. Just Mario needs to save Princess Peach, and he's got to go through the levels and uh, just kind of do what needs to be done to get to the final castle and just rescue Princess Peach. That's typically been the plot line for damn near almost every single Mario game out there. Yeah, there have been, like, some different ones, like Super Mario Sunshine had this whole, like, cleaning up a seaside town and stuff like that, but generally, the Mario games are not super deep in plot, especially from the fact that I think Miyamoto's design philosophy for the Mario games has been just make it so that it's enjoyable by both young and old, but also offer players a challenge if they want to pursue the challenge, and I think odyssey really demonstrates this really well because i mean you've got you've got like the the minimum amount of stars to collect and everything to to get the space vehicle moving around and stuff but if you're one of those who who's just like yeah that was great but i want more challenges then you can do the post game stuff where you go into the silver brick worlds where it's got like extreme platforming challenges that really challenge your mastery of the movement mechanics so if you're one of those who's just like ah, eh, main game was easy then odyssey will say oh you thought it was easy did you okay well we got some really diabolically challenging levels so have fun with that <laughs> yeah oh yeah they're they're accessible but they're fun but the main point of it is i, I think level design and challenge for the most part i would say in a lot of those 
Mario games. Like, story is not one of them. And I know some of you are going to say, what about Super Mario RPG and Paper Mario? Like, we're not talking about those. We're talking about the Yeah, those ones. are... Those would be considered side games. Yeah. So they were... They're, we're talking about the mainline Mario ones, which I, I think this movie is referencing a lot of. So why don't we just get right into the review of the Super Mario Brothers movie created by Illumination Studios. I, I think this movie is a good example of a movie that knows how to utilize a property and adapt it to a movie. I, I think in this one, this movie does a good job, especially how intimately familiar we are with, with this property. They made great decisions on what to use in the story, what to use as references, and then what to not use at all. And I think they did a actually a really good job when it came to deciding on what are we going to use as the basis of the story, and then what are we changing, and then what are we just going to say, oh, hey, you remember this? Oh, yeah, Princess is another castle, right? And like, yeah, okay, gotcha. I definitely enjoy the movie, but I think this is going to be more of an exercise as to how to adapt a property that is as beloved as this the right way. For the most part, I think it does a great balance with being both a kid's movie, but also entertaining to adults who may be parents of young kids. But these parents may have also grown up with the Mario games in their lifetime as well, too, because there are many places in the movie where there are very subtle references to Nintendo's storied lineage. The pizza place being called Punch-Out Pizza, obviously a reference to the old Mike Tyson Punch-Out games and stuff like that. And then, like you mentioned, you've got the subtle jokes, like the princesses in another castle being referenced. And it doesn't overdo them, which I think is good, because I think if this movie went a little too hard on kind of uh, the references, it would kind of feel like a, a Steve Buscemi joke of, how do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> so this movie just kind of straddles that line in a fine way. And in my opinion, I think that's probably to the testament of the involvement of Shigeru Miyamoto. For those who didn't pay attention to last week's podcast, um, Miyamoto-san is actually a huge fan of the Illumination movies. In particular, he loves the Minions movies. Mm -hmm. So for him to be involved in a Mario movie with one of his favorite studios of all time, I imagine he was probably like a kid in a candy factory, just being able to completely uh, be involved in the process of making this movie. Yeah. So. I think it's great, too, because, like you said, just does things tastefully as well, too. Right. I think you mentioned the fact that he was a fan of Illumination. I think you also have to state that if this was going to get made, they needed Miyamoto's permission to do this. They needed Miyamoto to be okay with it, because the last time the Nintendo did a movie with Mario, it was a disaster. Did poorly. No one liked it. It's become kind of a cult hit now. Well, not even a cult hit like a cult film now uh, that people watch because of how weird it is but if i remember the stories correctly they were so burned by it they did not want to court hollywood ever again and it really took that bridge to for miyamoto to say you know what let's give them a shot let's see how it is and in order to do that i i'm i'm gonna bet money that we're gonna find that miyamoto had to be directly involved at all times because if they did one thing they didn't like they would have pulled I think that's what really happened on that one. Did you hear the same thing when it came down to movie interpretations of their properties? I believe it was actually one of the stockholder calls several years ago. Mm -hmm. I think there was a stockholder from uh, Hong Kong or Europe who had asked and said, hey, there are a bunch of movies like Uncharted and stuff like that that are based on their respective video game properties. Are we going to see a modern day uh, movie based on the Super Mario um, Brothers property and everything? And I want to say some of the C-suites in, in Nintendo basically said, yeah, we're not really one to immediately jump into like a movie, but if we did, we want direct involvement in it because um, in the past we have licensed out our works for other uh, studios be they video game studios or movie studios to make something and in some cases things did not meet our standards and for anyone who's not in the video game know um, classic example uh, number one which Wiz mentioned was the original Super Mario Brothers film from 1993 and then the second reference that was kind of coded into that was the horrid horrid Philp CDI um, uh, oh. Uh, 3do games oh, so gosh. 
So that was kind of where Nintendo was several years ago. They were just like, yeah, if we're going to make any sort of like a non-Nintendo media involving our franchise, we must be directly involved in it. We are not going to just kind of sign off our IP to another studio and say, oh, yeah, go nuts with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that was a terrible idea on their end. But I, I think at the time when they made the, the, the Super Mario Brothers, they didn't have that kind of control. They, they just were like at the time, the dominant media was film and they had all the power. So if they want to get involved, they had to literally sign the rights away, essentially, in order to do that. So that's probably why that happened that way. Before we get into our specifics of what we liked and disliked, this is going to be a light spoiler podcast. We're not going to have a spoiler section. So bear that in mind. We're not going to probably spoil much of anything in this movie, but we're going to discuss some details that might be spoiler-esque, if you uh, if you will. Why don't we get into what characters we like the most out of this? Because again, we're very familiar with Mario Brothers, or, or Super Mario Brothers, I should say. And uh, I'm curious as to what you thought the best character of the film was. My opinion, it was easily, easily bowser being played by jack black okay the performance is just so so crazy so bombastic and then of course um, you've got the song that comes up a few times in the movie and has now even become a single which is um the song peaches that he sings yeah like i think a few times and it's it's a dumb song but it's absolutely fucking silly as shit and yeah. just jack black is just kind of great at that yeah, when people were kind of rolling their eyes that Chris Pratt was in this, I was rolling my eyes because Jack Black was in it. Because Jack Black <laughs> just seemed like way too of an obvious, oh, he's loud and goofy, so we need that type of actor. I'm actually kind of surprised I, I do like Bowser in this movie. Because I guess they modulated the voice enough to make not make it as Jack Black-like. And I like Jack Black. I like him in Tenacious D. I like him in other movies like School of Rock. Sometimes he go, he gets to be a little too much, and but I think he hit the right note on this movie. He was villainous enough in some ends, and he was funny enough in others. I think he actually did a very good job. Mine's actually Peach. I think they did a fantastic job with Peach in this movie. Peach in the games is literally just a, an end goal character. She is just like, she's the character you see when you beat the game. Maybe in a couple of games, she's a character, but even then not much of one. I think they did a fantastic job writing the character the way she is. Not only just giving her agency, but making her likable and also not making her completely insufferable. Because a lot of the times, it, when writers nowadays in games and movies, when they try to make a woman a strong, independent, you know the type, but like a, I don't need no man, I don't need no person, I can do this all by myself character, they become incredibly grating and annoying. But they gave her the right amount of agency and the right amount of charm that I think really worked. And I think Anya Taylor-Joy did a really good job as Peach. I, I, she was my favorite character in this film, and I was actually really surprised by it. Because this is the one... I, I, I don't know if you kept up on the discourse when this movie came out. There was this discourse about the like the characters in this movie. I, I know you were you knew about the discourse that happened when it was announced, but how many people were pissed about Chris Pratt being in it. But there was another discourse after the film came out of if this film is um oh do I even want to say the damn word? <laughs> there was a discourse in some circles if this film was woke or not. There were some that were like, oh it's definitely not a woke movie because it's got a male lead in the film and he's a hero and others are like, no, it's totally woke because it's got a female character who is not helpless. And I'm like, oh, fuck all. Stop it. It's got to be so fucking exhausting to think like that. But there was that discourse and I, I just watched this film going, like, this is the best way to write this character. Because honestly, if she was the way that she was in the, in the, in the, in the, in the games, I don't think any actress would want to take her. You wouldn't, no one would really want that character. But I think the way they wrote her was really well done. I think it was really good. What would you think of Mario in this? He was all right. I mean, Chris Pratt's performance was fine. I mean, it wasn't, like, the most compelling thing. But, I mean, in Mario's uh, performance in the games by uh, Charles Martinet has always been fine. Mm -hmm. And that's just kind of, that's just kind of how it is. Uh, how it's been so mm -hmm. for me i thought he was fine uh, charlie day as luigi was fine that was, was just kind of how i thought <laughs> they, were, they were fine too uh, 
the, the other discourse that happened, oh god, I don't know why I'm mentioning all these discourses that happened with this movie. The other discourse was people pissed that Charles Martinet wasn't Mario in this movie, and I'm like, do you really want to hear, yahoo, let's go, for about two hours? No, you really don't. You really don't want to hear that. I don't get why people were pissed off about that specifically. So, yeah, I, he was fine. Charlie Day was fine, I guess. I think I'm more surprised. I kind of like Donkey Kong a little more than I thought I was going to. Like, yeah, I mean, Seth Rogen's performance as Donkey Kong was kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of fun, I think, is the best way to put it. We're talking about the characters because if we're going to really talk about the writing, the writing is, like, passable. It, it's standard stuff of this type of movie for all ages. It, it is a fish-out-of-water movie where the character has to build himself up to become the hero and a whole bunch of wacky hijinks ensue. And so, like, it, it goes through that formula all over the, the, the movie. Like, all over. Like, if we're going to get into anything with writing, it's standard, but I, I think it's got some funny parts to it. It's kind of a fun kids movie, mm -hmm. and I wasn't going into this expecting, like, high art film or something like that, which was funny because when this movie hit originally uh, hit the critics' desks and stuff like that, I remember just seeing so many critics just going into this with the wrong mindset, just going, and, oh, this movie's terrible, no one should watch it, but... When you had reviewers who were from the video game space who'd watched this, they're just like, God, this is like one of the most fun movies I've watched in a while. <laughs> so, and, yeah. and it was funny, too, because, of course, just like you had so many of these critics just telling people don't watch this movie because it's it's like you're just dumb and and facile and stuff like that and just like when you had just ordinary people go and watch it when it actually came out to the public, the public was kind of charmed by it they're like hey this movie's fun as hell <laughs> yeah. i want to defend the critics a little bit here even though i think you're right i think they were a little too harsh in this movie you are dealing with people that had the mindset of roger ebert in the 90s i think you remember this time right where oh yeah roger ebert essentially said video games can't be art because i think the mentality he had of it was the fact that you can shape the story as you like makes it invalid to be art or something along those lines, or that the, the what makes the game the game is not the artistic expression, so it, it can't be art. I disagree with that. I think video games are art. Not only are there, there are critics who think like that, but again, with critics as well for a, a certain thing, either video games, TV, sometimes what they do is they just stick with that singular medium. They don't divert elsewhere. And a lot of critics now around this time are older. So they didn't either grow up with these games or they grew up in the mindset of these video games are stupid. They're dumb fun. They're for kids. And it's silly for an adult to play it. Whereas nowadays, it's actually quite common for an adult to play it. And I'm saying this also because I really think your enjoyment of the film is going to be based on your familiarity with the product. I could see a person watching this movie having no frame of reference as to why everything floats in the air. Why is there a rainbow all of a sudden when they're driving to the Mushroom Kingdom uh, that they're driving on? If you don't get those references, you're going to be confused and think this is so utterly stupid. But because we know that Rainbow Road is a track on all the Mario Kart games, and that the floating blocks are just a wink and a nod to the original Mario Brothers, we're okay with it. We get it's a reference, but they don't. So I think that's why a lot of them looked at this film and went, this is utter trash. Whereas so people like us, and I think people that were more intimate with the property were like, no, actually, this is fun. This is actually pretty good. I just want to defend that mentality. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's a fair thought too, but I don't know, just the way I kind of saw it was, okay, you know, just you can uh, you can go and look at something from from like Pixar back in the day as like high art, but um, just something like this is just nope, completely completely bullshit movie. This is this is dumb. This doesn't have any substance to it. Just do not watch this movie. And then of course, just having the public completely disagree on the opinion was just a, kind of a funny funny sort of like outcome to this whole thing. Right. I mean, they did utterly dismiss it. I, I agree with that. But on the other hand, uh, again, in defense of critics, I know this is not a popular stance to have, but in defense of critics, their job is to talk about films that, that elevate the art form. 
And if there's something that the Super Mario Brothers doesn't do at all, is elevate the art form. As fun as it is, it is very standard. It is very safe. It has a very standard plot, but it just references the, the, the games a ton and keeps it faithful to the games. That's why I think a lot of people reacted to this movie very well. Because let's also remember, Mario is one of, if not, it's not the, but it is one of the most popular brands in the world. It, it is incredibly popular. I think Pokemon is the only one that is a little bit higher than Mario. I th there are probably others too. I, I, I don't know exactly, but it is one of them. So the, the familiarity and the way that they reference all of this, I think really spoke to a lot of people who have a little bit of intimacy or know a little bit about the brand. So I think in that, and that's why the public gets it. But I also understand why critics are going to look at this and go, this is trash. I don't understand why this is happening, why they're doing from going from A to B to C, because that frame of reference is just not there. It's, it's, there's no connection. And I will say this, if you aren't intimately aware, or if you have not played the Mario games, or you don't care about the Mario games at all, I don't see people like that enjoying this movie. I really don't. Because it is a very standard movie. But if you, even if you have a, a cursory glance, like if you played it when you were young, or you played one and you're aware of what it is, I could see people somewhat liking it. But I, I think our reviews are going to be a little bit sunnier because we are intimately involved with this with brand. We do like this these games a lot. We know what these references are, and we get that. So I, the movie looks good. I, I do like the way the movie looks. The Mario games have a certain charm to it that I think this movie didn't have. Is that fair, or do you agree? To a sense, yes. I mean, but I think it's more just kind of a, a situation that um, this is sort of a uh, transference of uh, property to a different medium. And I mean, it's like we mentioned at the start of this podcast, uh, there hasn't really been a, a Mario movie since 1993. Right. So this is kind of the second attempt to put Mario on the silver screen and everything. Naturally, just um, not not all things in the video game will translate over perfectly. So some things probably had to be bent and written around and everything. But also with with Miyamoto's approval as well too. Mm -hmm. uh, all in all, uh, while it's not perfect, I think it does it does a well enough job. The way I would look at it, is this okay i think there are brilliant movies in the animation space I, I believe there's some brilliant ones that are uh computer animated i would not elevate this up to a toy story and up a shrek I, I, it doesn't even go anywhere near that but it is fun it, it is a good time i did enjoy myself watching it's just not up there it's it's but it's fun it's enjoyable is how i would look at it I did think the Blue Luma uh, that was uh, played by Julia Jelenic uh, was fucking hilarious. Oh, the Luma was hilarious. That is true. Yeah, because it was just constantly, hey, we're all going to die. What's the problem? I'm just like, whoa, that is fucked up. I'm waiting for the sweet release of death. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, that Luma was hilarious. God, what was another kid? Like, I like Toad in this movie a little bit, actually. I thought Toad was pretty funny. Keenan Michael Key was great as Toad. Yeah, I think the I think the best thing I can say about this movie is that there isn't a character that was in this where I was watching and going, "Oh God, please stop." Where there really wasn't anybody where I'm looking at all the characters now, and I'm like, "Nah, I thought they were all pretty well done." I can't even think of any. Can you? I mean, I'm, is there one that you that you saw that you're like, oh god, someone stop him, please? Like even like Donkey Kong played by Seth Rogen. I don't like Seth Rogen, and I thought that he was fine in this. I thought he was good. Anything? Yeah, honestly, I can't think of anyone that I was just like, ugh, get them off the screen. I hate them. Yeah, I I, I can't either. It's it's actually pretty well done. I, I thought at least. So why don't you go ahead with your final thoughts? Final thoughts? Um, I'd probably put this squarely at an 85%. I just wow, feel it's hot. just... Yeah, I think it's fun. It's uh, it's just fun for the whole family. Um, even more so if you've got a background in playing video games as um, as a kid. And uh, maybe you also have kids of your own. Then this is sort of a great way to bridge, bridge the gap between like... Mario games that you've grown up with, and then just bridging that gap with your kids who may have played Odyssey in the recent years. 
and the casting of the actors overall has been great. I personally feel that Jack Black as Bowser just stole the show. Overall, I just think it's a lot of fun and really um, with it now available on Peacock for streaming, just you should just go ahead and just give it a watch. Just especially now that it's uh, it's on Peacock. So I mean, I mean, it's not like you're having to toss money to a movie theater for tickets and potentially find out that you know you might not have been into it and you didn't have to spend the twenty five dollars to get the Blu ray version to find out. Ooh, yikes! I am not quite as into this as I thought I was. So yeah, I would absolutely encourage everyone who has had some sort of background in video games. Just go and give this a watch. It's definitely worth your time. I'm so surprised. 85%. That's that's pretty high, man. I'm going to give it three stars out of five for me. I, I really want to break down exactly why I'm saying three stars. I honestly think if I had no reference to any of the, the game, if I had no kind of attachment to the game itself, this would probably have been a two-star affair. The reason why is because the, the story is very standard. The jokes are they're good. They're good. A lot of my enjoyment was how they referenced and respected the property, the, the way that Mario, the Mario games are, the the, re, the constant references that is going on in the game. Because I was intimately aware of them, I enjoyed it more because of that. And, and that's why I'm giving it a three stars. If you are like, I think most people who don't play all the Mario games, played one once every once in a while, or played one when you were a kid, and you remember certain things about it, I would say give it a shot. It would be like a two and a half star. But if you are not interested at all in the property, you don't play video games, you have no idea what a Mario is, it's like a two or one and a half. But my rating is a three. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. The, the references are really well done. I think they respected the property. I, I honestly think this movie is a great example of how to adapt a video game property right, which is to take elements of the game, make a movie out of it, get, don't get too intimately involved, make the right references, choose what would work, choose do what doesn't work, and just make something good out of it. Like, just do it that way. It's a good time. It's not, like I think you said, it's not high art. It's not something that I think that I will uh, evangelize. But it is a fun time. It's three stars out of five for me and 85% for zero on the Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, let me ask you a, a question. I, I, I was going to try and worm you into doing a Sunday matinee, but I think you can answer this pretty quickly here. Nintendo made bank from this movie. Obviously, they're going to do this again. They're going to do a, a, either another Mario movie, or there are thoughts they're going to get another property and turn that into a movie. What of the Nintendo properties do you think would actually be the next one that they would do? The one that I've heard the rumor mill churn a lot about is that Nintendo, with their new formation of the Nintendo S uh, Studios label for the movie stuff, the one that I've heard so much discussion and potential speculation on is Nintendo's going to go for a more serious movie, and that movie will probably be square in the realm of the Legend of Zelda games. I think that's kind of a curious choice, especially for those who are sort of kind of casual Zelda fans. They may not realize that the series has a ton of lore. I mean, one of the encyclopedia guides, Hyrule Historia, goes over the fact that the series actually has three timelines. Mm. That you've got the the good timeline, the eh, everything's kind of okay, and the status quo timeline, and then you've got the apocalyptic timeline. In the world of uh, being Zelda fans, they've got their own favorite interpretation of the timeline. So if they go for a Zelda movie, it's going to be interesting in my mind because obviously they're going to have to try to pick something inspired by one of the timelines and if it's going to be one that uh, the director or producer likes more then you're going to have some fans who are going to bitch and gripe and go Ugh, why didn't they go for this timeline this timeline was clearly superior and of course it's going to come off as fucking insufferable <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think at this point when it comes to the fan bases of a certain property i just ignore them i'm just like oh, okay you want to listen to them but you you don't want to listen to them totally I think Legend of Zelda is a good idea, but and that might be what it is, and you're probably right. I think if they were smart, they would do Luigi's Mansion. They have a $2 billion movie that they just made. Why not make a side movie with Luigi? 
And the, the Luigi's Mansion games are good and they're fun and there is a, a light story to them. But God, how many weirdos do we know who are into Halloween and creepiness? I know like <laughs> I know like five. And I can't and they have posts all the time it's like, Oh, it's seven months till October I'm like, You fucking weirdo, stop it. But <laughs> but yeah, but I know a lot of them. So I, I think you would not only get the, the Halloween crowd who would really enjoy a lighter Halloween movie, but then you have the people who watch the Super Mario Brothers movie get to two billion. That could make more money. I think as a business sense, I would be going over to Miyamoto and go, hey, hey, Miyamoto, bro, can we uh, do Luigi's Mansion? You know, would that be good? But yeah, I, I also understand why you would do Legend of Zelda. Why not Metroid? Yeah, that's my personal pick. My personal yeah. pick would be Metroid, mostly because there is kind of a cohesive lore to it. Personally, uh, I kind of love the sci-fi space, and I think it would be great to kind of see like a, a 3D animated Metroid movie, especially since Metroid's inspirations go kind of deep because um, I believe the producer of the first one was sort of obsessed with Ridley from the original Alien movie. Yeah. And that's where a sort of Samus took, took her inspiration from as well, too. Well, this was part of the talk about what Nintendo was going to do as a new movie. A lot of them mentioned Metroid, and a, a lot of people assumed it would be 3D animated, which I get why. I think Metroid would be good at live action, and I I'm going to make some people screech when I say this. I think the perfect Samus Aran would be Brie Larson. <laughs> oh, I can, I, I can already hear the screeching in my mind. Look, I, I am not a fan of Captain Marvel. I thought the Captain Marvel movie was bad. However, Brie Larson is a very good actor. She not only has the right look, but she has the right build. And as much as I don't like Captain Marvel, she looks great as Captain Marvel. She can do the fight scenes. She can do the, the, those scenes pretty well. She's believable as that character. It's just the writing that she had behind her sucked. But if you put her as Samus Aran, and if it makes you feel any better, guys, she's under a mask most of the time, so it's not like you're going to actually see her face if that bothers you that much. But Brie Larson as Samus Aran, I think that would be a great idea. But if they just go computer animated, I, that's fine too. I, I think Metroid would actually do pretty well live at. But if it goes computer animated, I'd understand that too. Especially, uh, I think the computer animated route would be the main path that they would take mostly because um, if i remember the stock report from uh sometime last year uh, apparently nintendo put a sizable investment into illumination like uh, a good yeah. few million dollars yeah then that makes sense they're, they're probably gonna do everything in computer animation at that point okay makes sense in there okay I think Metroid F-Zero, and eh, there's one other that I have, but I think Metroid and F-Zero would actually do really well live action. You would have to CGI the hell out of it, but I think if you would actually have good actors in those movies, it would work. But yeah, if it goes through animated, I, I, I wouldn't be able to.